This is our air source heat pump set up in the training room here at Tomcat. And the last thing I've got to install is these antifreeze valves. So this is an inter-zero antifreeze valve. Now I've seen on the internet and social media saying you don't need antifreeze valves and glycol's rubbish and it messes everything up. But I've actually spoken to Daikin and asked them what do they us prefer us to use? Do they prefer us to use glycol or they, do they prefer us to use antifreeze valves? And they said straight away they prefer us to use antifreeze valves because if you use glycol one you need to put a little device into the heat pump itself to tell them it's got glycol in it and also it reduces its kilowatt output so they would like us to use antifreeze valves but it got me thinking do these bloody things actually work? I've never seen anything on social media or the interweb about them actually working so I thought I would set up a little experiment in the workshop next door. So let's get on with it and find out if antifreeze valves actually do work. Now this is the experiment I've set up. So I've got a bucket on the floor to catch any water. If the antifreeze valve actually opens up, we've got a, a copper U so I can pour the water in. We have uh, two of my temperature probes, so my TPI SP323 Bluetooth probes and I've connected it to my iPad and they're reading the temperature of the outside pipe at the moment which is 9.2 degrees. I have a kettle full of iced water here and at the moment the water in here is reading 1.4 degrees centigrade. So that should be enough to operate this valve because these valves are designed to start operating at 4 degrees and full, be fully open if the water temperature is 3 degrees or lower. And according to this kettle with ice in it, I've got 1.2 degrees. So hopefully this little experiment will work. So let's get on with it and see if this antifreeze valve does actually open. Now the water in here is reading 1.2 degrees, so let's pour the water in and see what happens. So we can see the pipe's reading, or one's reading 3.5, one's reading 4.4. That's right up to the top. Let's see what the water actually is reading. According to this, the water is one degree. Let's have a look here. Water on this side is reading five degrees. How does that work out? Oh, it'd be taking the heat out of the copper, won't it? So that's why there's a difference. But that's reading one degree. That's reading five degrees. And the valve isn't opening. Let's see what the valve itself, what temperature the valve itself is. Let's put that onto there. So the valve itself is reading 4.6. So even though the water going in is one degree, because of the copper, it's causing us problems. So I've come up with an idea. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the valve and the copper in the freezer upstairs overnight. We know water in it, so obviously it doesn't freeze. And then I'm going to pour in really cold water 
so we'll see what happens then tomorrow. So, see you in 24 hours. Now, here goes. Let's take the thermometer out of there. Bit in this way. So that's right up to the top. So we can see on these probes. Right, it's working. Look. It's actually opened and it's dripping. So our pipe temperature is just about four and a half degrees. Let's just check our water temperature, which you can see is around three degrees. Out of water now because it's dripped out. Still dripping. Well, that's closed now. This water temperature is still two degrees, but it opened for a little bit, didn't it? And then it closed again. Anyway, at least it worked. So, pipe temperature is reading 4.7, 4.8 degrees. The water inside the pipe is reading 2 degrees. And it stopped dripping now. Anyway, at least we did manage to get it to work and we did see how it works. It's more of a, more of a drip than a gush. Anyway, hopefully you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.